Hello everyone, welcome to Graithway on the, uh, the edge of Lake Windermere for the Lakeland two day enduro. This weekend we're looking at Beta, the riders and the bikes. In the next hour or so we're going to be linking in with Sam Ludgate from SLF Road looking at the aftermarket products you can buy for at the bikes there. We're also going to be linking in with Acklam's Beta from Harrogate looking at the, the current bikes and what's new for 2017. And we've also got a special edit from Cam Quarry where we're linked in with uh, Chris Windle who was at Erzberg this weekend so wishing uh, him the best of luck there. The event's getting underway now, we're going to go down to the signing on tent and see who's arriving. Okay, we're just with uh, Joe Allison. Joe, sportsman class this weekend, yep. riding the Beta 300 RR. That's it. Yeah, just first sort of proper seasons racing, so just had to go on all different bikes and, and sort of liked it really. Nice and smooth. That, that's about it. How long have you had the Beta? A year, a year exactly. I'm just coming up to tax it for next year, so end of this month. Um, yep. But. Can't fault it in any way at all. So this is your first proper uh, season of racing then? Yeah, as such, yeah, first proper. I've, I've done one every now and then, like, but sort of money's come a bit better this year, so I do some I enjoy. We'll have a great weekend. We'll Thank try and get much. some shots as you're going round. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch up with you, mate, yeah, Sam. no worries. Thank all right, you. cheers, yeah, Joe. Man, cheers. So uh, we're just with uh, Joe's mate now, Sam Cartwright. Sam, I know you're a sportsman class this weekend. Well, you've booked your mate in. You're both running together, so to speak, and yeah, you're on the beta right. as well. Yep, go off the beta from the uh, KTM 250XC and find it a lot better. The engine's a bit more tractable, um, you know, it pull, pulls a bit smoother. Is this a 300? 300, yeah. Yeah, two-stroke. And uh, how old's the bike? It's a 16 model. It's about six months old. Yeah. And uh, enduro-wise, uh, you know, how many events you've done in the past? Are you you're fairly new to enduro? I think I've done about 10 events, something like that, over over a few <laughs> over a few <laughs> years. Uh, it's not my it's not my sort of main hobby. Um, I'm, I'm into flying and um, you know, more road racing. Yeah. Of a back type of a background. Yeah. Where were your last event? Um, we did Masham a, a few weeks ago, and Driftfield a few weeks before that. Are you familiar with the Greatherweight Estate? Um, we've done it once before, uh, back in 2013. And what do you think? <laughs> well, we did one lap and <laughs> called it a day. <laughs> well, take it from me, it's dry out there. There's only a couple of puddles. The going is pretty good, so I think you're going to enjoy the course, but have a great weekend. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. We're just with uh, Anthony Tempest now. I was riding expert vets this weekend on the beat at 300 RR. You're looking forward to the event, Anthony? Yeah, yeah, very good. Very good. It'll be brilliant. Weather's great and everything. Can't wait. I know you come from a trials background uh, up until, what, four or five years ago when you switched to Enduro, but I know you've done the Scott trials a few times. I have, yeah, a few finishes, that's as good as I've got, but yeah, I've enjoyed it. Good flog out. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's look talk about Enduro, which we, which we are really interested in now. You know, when you switched from trials to Enduro, you were first on, I think you were on a Honda 450. I was, yeah, <laughs> an animal. <laughs> it was a bit much for this, <laughs> for me. And uh, from there on uh, to the 250, and you've also had a Sherco as well. I have, yeah, yeah, 300 Sherco, four stroke. That was a good bike. But you're now on the Beta, and why Beta? Uh, my mate opened the shop and offered us a deal on it, so I took it, CJT off road, and I took the deal, and it's been a brilliant bike. Yeah. You know, reliability wise, how have you found it? Brilliant. Absolute brilliant. Yeah. I've only, I only put a piston in it after 100 odd hours for the sake of it. I didn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I just put it in, yeah. I know, just talking about that, we've had people say, you know, 200 hours on a, on a yeah. two-stroke piston in a beat. I, it would have done it easy. I just thought, I put one in just on the safe side. Just, oh, it would have kept on going. Yeah. Took it out, it's not wrong with it. So <laughs> <laughs> Kept so it spare. Let's talk <laughs> about your, uh, your recent uh, enduro uh, escapades. You know, the last enduro did, where was that? Uh, last... Uh, I did extreme ravines, yeah. 
second to last deal in the vets and I messed it all up and ended up fourth on the last deal. <laughs> yeah, so. So uh, this weekend, what's your expectations? Uh, top three in the vets. Yeah. Got to be. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a great weekend. Yeah. Will you wear a GoPro for us on the special I test? I will do, yeah. 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 No problem at all. all right, we'll catch up with you later Thank on. Thank you. Then. Cheers. Cheers, Anthony. Thank Thanks you. A lot. All right. Yeah. Just down at Acklands Beach at Harrogate now with uh, Joel Sadler. Now, Joel's a bit of a legend. You may remember this uh, video a few years ago, which Mikey Lonsdale put together, but just check this out. F I F T Y C E N T N S N O O V. We internationally known and locally respected. Now I know you done heard about me. F I F T Y C E N T N S N O O V. Right, Joel. <laughs> a long time since the the hot tub there. I hope we're going to try and keep this interview clean. I'll try my best. Can't promise out, but uh, we'll see what we can do, Robbo. <laughs> I know you and your dad have gone into business now with the Harrogate Van Centre and the uh, Acklands Beta doing the enduro bikes and the trials bikes. How's things been going? It's been really busy. It's been good for us these last couple of years. Uh, we've moved up to uh, Leavens Park last year, and it's just been a crazy year. To be honest, the the enduro range is. Uh, with Beta has just gone mad this last this last year, with like the X Trainer and the RRs, um, so it's good. Yeah, it's good things to come really. Cool, cool. You know, you are a, a franchise dealer. You are 
beat it and that's all you do you don't do with any other models do you no it just, just solely beta um just the the build quality of the beta the backup with john lampkin it's all we really need to do just specialize in this one this one manufacturer really so in the beta range we've got the cross trainer which we've got in front of us here yeah. what other models have we got we've got the the rr which they've got the the 250 and the 300 uh two stroke and then in the four stroke range you've got the 350 390 430 and then 480. with uh, with this cross trainer it's a little bit smaller than the uh, the, the rr and the, the four stroke models Wh who's it aimed at i think really we've been to the they tried to market around kind of the the green laning kind of boys uh, something a little bit lower a little bit more manageable because not everyone's six foot tall and got long legs so something that they can be a bit more planted and for a lot of like the older guys not getting any younger they want something a bit lighter a bit more manageable you know a lucky start that's just instant yeah. uh, and the the auto loop system so they don't have to be carrying oil and everything in the rucks out if they're going out for day and i noticed with all the beta range now on most of the models i think excluding the rr 300 the race the factory one yeah. Yeah. they've all got the auto loop system haven't they yeah, with the, the two straight range, I know Beta have been testing it for a couple of years now before they brought it out, and it, it works really well. We've not had one issue with the auto loop system. With like the X trainer here, uh, two or three of the guys said it's quite easy to do 160 miles. And it's normally like three or four tanks full, and then having to refill the auto loop system back up again. I know these are coming at a fairly competitive price at around £5,400. Which is it's quite good, isn't it's it? It's mega, really, compared to there's nothing really else on the market like this, and under five and a half grand, which a lot of the enduro bikes nowadays are six and a half grand, seven grand plus. Um, so it's a very affordable bike, which ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. The the other models like the two fifteen, the three hundred two strokes. We'll just have a look at one of them now, if we can, and just sort of compare that with this one. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So this is the 300 RR model? Yeah, this is the 300 factory RR. Uh, it's the same ones like Steve Holcomb's, um, like the one they won a lot of the British rounds last year. And, um, cracking bit of kit. So compared to a, a standard RR, the factory, what's it got different? It's got the, the factory forks in the front. Um, it's got the, the wider pegs and a few of the like, little bling bits and pieces, which a lot of people like the anodized bits. And uh, a mapping switch as well, so it's got a wet setting and a, a dry setting. So majority of the time in UK, it'd be on wet setting, yeah. won't it? But uh, uh, it's it's one of them bikes that's really smooth and talky off the bottom end, and you can ride it really trousy. I noticed it's got the time card wallet on the uh, the seat. Does that come as standard on on all the models, or just on this factory one? Just on the on the factory models, it's just it's an extra. Uh, but you can actually buy the the factory seat cover. So if you want the, if you've got the standard RR, you can buy the the extra seat to cover to, uh, to accommodate your car, uh, time card. One of the features which I do like about the Beta is the seat, how it comes off, which is quite good. Isn't it? It's quite uh, unique and across all the, all the enduro sort of range, really. Yeah, yeah, straight across all the the RR models and the X Trainer. It's just really simple. You know, if anything does happen, if you do have a bit of a moment wha out while you, you're riding, you don't need any tools to get underneath the seat or into the airbox. You can just do it all by hand, um, which is really easy, to, really easy to use. When it comes to general spares, like uh, internal engine parts, uh, fork parts, things like that, how quick a turnaround can you do it? Normally, with quite a lot of stuff we have on the shelf, uh, but normally with BT UK, they're pretty good. It, normally, it's two or three days uh, to get stuff across and they have quite a wide selection of parts on the shelf there so I think for a lot of people with Beta being such quite a, a new brand with the Enduro side and the backup uh, it's nice that we know that Beta UK they stock quite a lot of parts so if you do have a bit of a moment when you're out and about and you, you break something you're more likely to get going for the weekend after. Yeah like uh, you know a master cylinder for example if you yeah. Do something stupid like crash it on a rock, <laughs> yeah, yeah. or uh, a bat mudguard, a plastic kit. Yeah, yeah, it's all either we've got it in stock, or 
if we've got to get it from B to UK, normally it's two or three working days. A plastic kit for one of these, what would it sort of retail at? With the, the plastic sets, it, um, there's no one really kind of like Polysport or anyone like that have brought a, a full set out yet because they normally, like the, you look at like the KTM stuff or anything else, it's around that kind of 80, 90 pounds, isn't it? But the, the genuine beta, the, the full set is around about 120, which I think for a, a genuine set isn't, isn't crazy money, to be honest. And what is the demand like for these bikes at the moment? And cause, because, you know, when you look compare beta to other manufacturers, uh, they are a small manufacturer in the day, aren't they? Is there quite a lot of demand? Yeah, I, th I think with the success of what Steve Holcomb's had with the British, you know, as soon as he jumped on the beta, he's, he's been riding out of his skin, riding really well, doing w really well at world level now. And it's nice to see how he's progressed riding a beta. Then you've got like the Hemingways, who uh, ride him really well at all the extreme kind of stuff. And it's nice with the, like, the 300, I've ride the 300 two-stroke myself. It's a very forgiving bike. A lot of people think a 300 is a very snappy kind of pulling your arms out, whereas the Beta 300 is very talky and very smooth. Uh, so a lot of the time, doing the extreme stuff or the technical stuff, you don't want something that's pulling your arms out because you're just going to be tired in, in no time. So if I was going to come into the shop today and buy a 300 factory RR, what would the yeah. turnaround time be for that? Normally with like the Enduro, the Enduro and the Trial stuff, we like to have one in stock all the time or sometimes like with the X trainers because there's been such demand been take, there's been a bit of a waiting list with them and we're kind of not far off waiting the pictures of the 17 model beaters so they'll be probably June like August time somewhere around that not like like KTM are out now aren't they <laughs> so a lot of people asking when's the pictures of the beaters I said, well th there won't be now but they won't be far away but if it's anything like the 16 models, the 17 mo models will be absolutely mega as well. Yeah. I know you've got a cross trainer in the workshop at the moment being prepared. Is that for a uh, specialist customer? Yeah, a guy rung us up and, and he wanted a few little bits and pieces on his bike. Um, so we've, we've just got the X trainers in the, the latest batch. So we're putting the, the bash plate on, rad braces, setting things up to how he really wants it. So... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just personalising it for that, for that one person and, and just making sure he's, he's happy with it. Well, it's been uh, interesting uh, talking to you today, Joel, and I've looked at all the bikes. Uh, if you want to know more about Acklam's Beta, check out their Facebook page, and they've also got a website as well for uh, up-to-date prices. But uh, I'm really impressed with the bikes. Uh, I think one of these bikes may have my name in it next April, well, but we'll have to wait and see. But uh, thanks very much. Yeah, cheers, Robert. Thanks for coming.
It's day two and uh, we're just back in the pits now before the race starts this morning with uh, Anthony Tempest. Anthony, good day yesterday. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it, really enjoyed it. Good we, ride out. we know the event was cut short by one lap. I think some people find it a bit difficult out there, I shall say, the technical going. Yeah, no, it was good. We should have we should have had the extra lap in, I think. It was good going. That's what you want. <laughs> right, your bike. I've noticed yesterday while we've been looking at you, you've got quite a few sort of aftermarket products on it and starting with the uh, the tank. The tank, the extra large tank, when did you get that from? Uh, Beta USA. I ordered that in from US. And compared to a conventional tank, how many more litres does it give you? It's 13, 13 and a half litres. Yeah, I can get two and a half hour air and out of it now, if it's not too open. So it helps a lot. You've got the linkage guard underneath. Tell me about that. Yeah, that's just for protection. I was always whacking the linkage on the bottom when we were practicing rocks and stuff. So that helps the linkage. It's great. And the the different colour cylinder head, the the casings you've got yeah. in there. Too. What's that's, all that about? That's my own business spraying. So. We did some wheels for a lad in the candy gold, so I decided to paint some bits on the bike, <laughs> make what's, it look a bit different. What sort of paint have you used for that? It's a two-pack, just a two-pack. Is it baked on? It is baked, yeah, yeah, we put it through the oven at work. Quite, in, quite interesting, and different. Yeah, and you're running a recluse clutch, why is that? Why is that? Um, started tiring later on in extreme events, so rather than having to use the clutch and that, I can just forget about it, and just automatic it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about your exhaust system now, and it's quite, uh, quite a snazzy one. Yeah, yeah, it's a fresco system. Just gives it, gives it a bit more. I've got the front pipe, but I haven't put it on today. And it gives it more mid to top when I've got the whole system on it. It makes it sing well. <laughs> In terms of yesterday's event, we've got some some good GoPro footage from you. Really good. I had a look at it last night. And yeah. uh, do we know where you where you came yesterday? I don't. I don't know yet. Not got any provisional results as yet? No, no, none yet. Hopefully I've had a good day. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hope you have a great second day and we'll try and catch up with you later on yeah. uh, in the season. Brilliant, thank you. Thanks a lot. Cheers, Anthony. Cheers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you've seen Anthony Tempest bike there with all the uh, aftermarket goodies on the tank, link, linkage guard, exhaust, etc. Recently we caught up with Sam Ludgate from uh, SL Off-Road who's now offering aftermarket parts for Beta. So this is how we went. Right, we're just in the uh, the workshop now at SL Off Road with Sam Ludgate in deepest, darkest Pontefract. Well, Upton, in fact, aren't we? It is, yeah. Yeah, it's the uh, trendier parts of Upton we're in at the minute, <laughs> <laughs> if there's such a thing. Now, Sam, I know you've had a, a long, long standing relationship with Beta, uh, with trials, and now into the enduro scene, particularly uh, extreme enduro. What made you start doing the aftermarket products? Um. Yeah, I've I rode beaters for five years at trials, um, and then when I went to in, well, I went to road racing, and then went on to enduro. I had a gas gas, and then 2014 I got a beater, and uh, I don't have any, um, I don't sort of owe, owe beat to anything. I'm just a just a happy customer, and the RR has, has been a fantastic bike, um, but I, I have struggled for the aftermarket parts, not the stock beater parts. Not the genuine parts, sort of aftermarket like trick bits, and I'm uh, I'm well known for like <laughs> for having having all the guards and the uh, all the uh, all the bits and bobs like so, um, yeah. I, I I found a few contacts and found a few good products abroad, and uh, one thing and another, and 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 people were sort of saying, oh, where do you get this from, and where do you get that from, and stuff, and so after. A long time, a lot of sort of deliberating about it. I decided to, uh, yeah, set up a little business and register a SL Off Road. Set up the eBay shop and the Facebook business page. And well, let's have a look at what you've got on offer. I noticed you've 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 got a, a nice little enduro engineering corner there. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll just have a look at the uh, these are these are the uh, the radiator guards. So if you're looking at buying a set of radiator braces for a 250 or a 300 RR beta, what would the that be the going price be? Uh, these are 78, 78, yeah. Everything's priced at, as very aggressively like competitive, so obviously I've got sort of minimal, minimal overhead so I can provide some good, good prices. So also in the Enduro Engineering corner we've got this uh, sump guard, haven't we? Let's have a look at it. Now just tell me about this because this looks a really good piece of uh, quality, are, yeah, quality uh, kit. 
Yeah, they're well known. Um, last few years, I've had some other sump guards. I won't mention the names, but they say when they say they're aircraft grade alloy, I think they're talking about the uh, T trays or something like that. But <laughs> so you, they were just getting bent, and you could literally just bend them back with your hands, kind of thing. So it was actually uh, Bolts. Uh, Paul Bolton said, "Do you want to get an enduro engineering one?" And it was right. I mean, I've I've, I've had that on about a year now, and it's uh, it's a proper bit of kit, like, and it's still in shape, and it hasn't come loose or bent round the frame like the other ones sort of doing it's, and it's the only one which has um the extra piece on the back which which covers the uh the small gauge frame by the foot peg which is particularly yeah. vulnerable on the beta so it's the only one that actually has protection for that right. yeah it's a proper bit of kit yeah all the uh factory beta boys i think the hemingway brothers they all run these as well as all the they, i think they use all the other engineer enduro engineering products as well so yeah. definitely uh um, proven. We've got some really fancy seat covers, uh, which are the Motor Marley uh, seat covers here. And yeah, uh, this is um, Motor Marley is from uh, Slovenia actually, um, and that's a small company making sort of aftermarket parts. And I got sort of involved with them about a year or so ago. Yeah, and, and that was the same again. It they had some really good stuff, and people would come up to it, say, "Oh, where did you get that from?" And say, "Oh, you have to pay for it or whatever, and wait for it for <laughs> a few weeks to turn up and." Um, I've I've got the I've got a cover on mine that I've had on for probably about a year now, and as you can see, it's wearing really nice and um, doing its job well. And what's the sort of general retail price of one of these? These are these are sixty two, uh, so it's not it's not cheap for a seat cover, but they are um, bespoke made for the for the BTRR seat. You can see it's sort of stitched in place. It's not just a flat a flat cover. This with um, the seat foam, the soft seat foam. As many beta riders will know, the seats are seats are like sat on a brick basically. But <laughs> <laughs> um, this way, uh, with that, um, is just ideal. Like people, people sort of sit on my bike and instantly they're just like, I want one of them. Get one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. sold loads of these. You've got some really nice uh, exhaust guards, carbon fiber exhaust guards, and uh, a clutch cover. We'll just get one of these out now. Let's look at this one underneath in particular because this is for, oh, it looks like for, this, for a cross trainer. When I started off, I didn't realise there was that many X trainers about, so I wasn't really sort of paying too much attention to them, but I soon realised there's, there's loads about and there's loads of guys, loads of guys that have been, been buying stuff. So just recently I've been looking into a bit more and got a few more sort of X trainer parts, including this, which has just come out. Um, yeah, s similar to the the RR cover. Got the RR yeah. one there. Um, this is actually a, the latest type, which has got a slightly thicker weave that's meant to be meant to be a bit stronger. But um, we've sold loads of those. I've had I've had that one on my bike for uh, 12 months now, with extreme enduros, and it's it's as you can see, it's still it's still solid, like. And these are made by the by the same company that makes yeah, the seat covers more yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed you've just got a nice little <coughs> uh, clutch cover there as well. Yeah, <coughs> obviously the beta beta clutch covers wear off um, on the paint quite quite quickly, so you either uh, keep respraying it or get a <laughs> close cover or, or or one of these. So uh, I do I do like the carbon fiber products, and that that just simply just sticks on with silicone, right? Like the uh, carbon fiber covers do on the on the road racing stuff, just stick them on. Now we've got the uh, the linkage guard, <coughs> which again another another product by uh, Motor Marley. Yes, yeah, this is um, the, uh, obviously the popular one is the Fastway um, one from America, but that one is adjustable for that. That yeah. does have the adjustable uh, collars in to sort of adjust the height. It doesn't seem to be a popular thing in this country. Um, and they are mega expensive. Them, I think they're about three hundred quid or something like that. Right. Um, but this one doesn't have that. But it's actually made of seven oh seven five T six, which is a higher grade uh, billet than than those ones. So it's actually meant to be tougher. Yeah. Um, and this is a new version they've just released, uh, a lighter version, and it just replaces the uh, the standard link. So it's just plug and play, just unbolt it. And 10 minute fit and it comes with the bearings and the seals they're uh, NTN sort of premium bearings as well so and they are the stock bearings so if you ever need to replace them it's just so it's just a straightforward beta part what will just fit into that yeah yeah you just take the link off and put put this link on um 
obviously the the linkage uh the bottom of the shock clevis and the um the uh, the hub with the bearings in is is quite vulnerable on these for the especially on the extreme stuff I've been running one of these now for about a year and it's uh, it's been doing great so and we're just looking at the the b r p uh chain block for the the swing arm lower swing arm yeah it's the chain guide off the bottom um same again i've got one used it for all the extreme extreme enduros and it's took it's took an absolute battering in it but it's still it's still solid it's yeah. in place because p- people are always knocking the chain off in in hard enduros yeah. and half of that is because the standard ones are a bit weak or they've worn and they're mm-hmm. damaged and so the chain's moving about more than it should and you know compared to a, a conventional chain guard what does this re- retail at? Uh, yeah, these these are a lot more money. Um, these are sixty six sixty six quid. So, and the, I think the standard ones are a lot cheaper. But like I said, it's a it's a totally different product to the standard yeah. one. And we've also got the uh, the hoses. Yeah, this is just a, a silicon hose kit, um, but it actually has it does away with the thermostat in there. So. Uh, and that gives gives better better flow, so you've got better cooling. Obviously, extreme enduro, another thing, overheating, stuck there on the spot kind of thing. Um, and this is how the factory factory bikes run with that thermostat bypass. Mm. Um, so yeah, these are these are really popular as well. Right, Sam, uh, <laughs> we could talk hours about all these products you've got here, but you've got a massive selection. I think mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if anybody wants to uh, order the sundry. Uh, you know the day-to-day products like the brake pads, sprockets, etc. They can order them at the same time as the source yeah, guard or the yeah. or the seat cover. Yeah, I've got the uh, SPS uh, sintered pads. That's what I found that is the best for sort of price and performance and longevity. So, and obviously like wheel bearing kits and uh, air filters and seals and stuff. So yeah, a lot of that stuff's yeah. in as well. Well, thanks for inviting us down today, Sam. It's been really interesting looking at what you've got on offer. We could talk for hours about everything here, the motor mileage stuff, the enduro engineering. Uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you at Graithwaite this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the possibly. enduro. Um, yeah, I think I'm just doing the Sunday. It's a two-day one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I've just got the pass to do the one-day light. So <laughs> 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 no, we, we've got, we, we're doing other stuff Saturday, so I'm just going to make it Sunday. But yeah, it's a time card, isn't it? I've not done a time card before, so it should, should be interesting. should be interesting. But if you want to know more about SL Off-Road and what products Sam has got on for offer, Contact him through Facebook on the SL Off-Road page. He's also got an eBay shop, but he would prefer to be contacted direct if possible. But, uh, yeah, thanks very much, mate. You're welcome. Nice to have you. (laughs) (laughs) Nice one. (laughs) Okay, we're just back now with Sam Ludgate. He was uh, racing this weekend at the event. It's uh, good to see you, Sam. Yeah, yeah, you too, Robbo. Some uh, some good products, uh, what you've got on offer there. Uh, this weekend, I know it's, you're not a big a big fan of time card in Europe. I know you've done one before, and you're not really sort of familiar with the the way they run, are you? No, no. Some of the lads are just uh, doing the maths for me. Like it's been it's been a while since I've been to school and had to use a use a brain for that. But no, I'm just just doing Sunday. I mean, obviously I'm an ex trials lad, so it's all about the extreme stuff. But I also need to uh, brush up on on the faster stuff. So and you can't beat a place like this, can you? For a couple of days away, so. Just just come up for a, a B&B last night, um, run by a 120-year-old battle axe like, t- <laughs> telling, us, telling us everything to do. <laughs> so that was quite comical, but yeah, just... Uh, well, let's talk about your bike. This particular bike, is it a 2015 or something? It is, yeah, it's just a 2015 one. Um, it, 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 it's honestly been such a good bike. Uh, I've done, it's done about 240 hours on it now, hard hours as well. I did a piston at 180, changed it, and the other piston were like mint. I've kept it on the shelf even. Um, yeah, and it's just been a really good bike, and I've I've not touched anything else on the engine. It's just been up parts have just been running gear, like chain and sprockets, pads, and usual stuff. Um, and the 2016s weren't that much different, so I was just happy with this bike and happy to keep it like so. Are so you still on a, a premix? Uh, yeah, pre-mix? yeah. I mean the the racing model comes with a. With um, without the oil injection anyway, so um, so that wasn't a wasn't a worry to to have that. We've spoken to Anthony Tempest uh, a short time ago. I take it, and I saw you having a chat with him. He's uh, I take it he spilled you in on uh, what what to expect today on the on the course. Yeah, yeah. He said, well, we came last night and we had a walk up to that. Say walk up, managed to drive the uh, 
car right up to the top piece. Like <laughs> that was quite fun. But I had a walk of that special test, and a few of the lads have said it's quite rocky and gnarly in the woods and that. So that sounds that's, that sounds great to me. So if you're interested in your, your aftermarket products for Beta, Sam is the man to speak to. Cause, you know, like, like as you've seen in the the film a short time ago, he's got quite a lot of uh, a lot on offer, and uh, he's using these products on his bike, like the disc yard, the linkage, etc. Aren't you? That's it. Yeah, it, 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 it's no big idea. Like I've said before, it's just it's just that I've used, and people have come come to me and said, "Oh, where do you get that from?" So that's like I said, it's just what kicked it off. We'll have a great day, and we'll get some GoPro footage from you. Nice one. It might be a bit steady, like, but <laughs> cheers, Sam. Fast forward it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. cheers a quick word with the. Uh, from the north, north east there, uh, Dennis Shale. Morning, Dennis. Okay, yeah, we're just right. with yeah, we're just with Dennis uh, Shale from the north east. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How's it go yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> all right, hard graft, but enjoyable. So just thought I'd take my time yesterday, let it all bed in a little bit, and then decide where we're going to do it today. But I think yesterday has probably caused a few casualties, dropped a few people out, and probably made the day a little bit easier. I think so. Just took my time and enjoyed it and then uh, see what the cracks are today. should be a bit, a bit better, I think. Now, we know you're riding the beta four-stroke this week. Yeah, yeah. The 350. Big heavy lump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know you said yesterday that you're, you're two-stroke man at heart, aren't you, really? You think the four-stroke yeah, is... Now, yeah. yeah, you think the four-stroke is probably a bit heavy for this sort of terrain? It's heavy for this type of stuff, i found. When I'm on the fire roads and the flow and stuff, it's absolutely spot on. It's got what you need. But when you're getting them technical bits on the woods, roots, rocks, things like that, yeah. it's just a nightmare. Yeah. That'd be a nightmare. Too big, too heavy. Yeah, when you get in there, it's technical and it's sort of semi-extreme, isn't it? So, which yeah. is preferable for a two-stroke engine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and that feels like it's lugging all the time. That you know, when you're, you know, when you're on a bit of a technical bit. So, I was going to chop it in. My mate over there tried to persuade me to keep it and put a recluse in, but see what happens. I think Tuesday, Graham Charlton's getting a phone call and swapping it in for a two-stroke. I reckon. Yeah, so a two-stroke beta. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to probably a uh, two-stroke, two-fifty beta. I think. Yeah. I've had my full KTM. So I've had three or four years with them. I've beat it for a couple of years, I reckon. Right. Yeah, I can't fault them. Overall, mate, bike spot on. Absolutely love it. It's just 354 strokes, not ideal for this, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been up there in a 450 driving that sort of terrain, yeah, and yeah. It, it is a bit of a, it is a bit of a handful. Yeah, so I can I can imagine the 350 yeah, yeah. can be yeah, a bit of a handful. Yeah, when you get a chance to get going, so yeah, when you get a get going, it's good crack. But when it's not, yeah. it's just soul destroying, isn't it? It's like anything with these bikes. It's it's horses for courses, isn't it? Mm. Four strokes for certain, you know, yeah. type of events and terrain, and two strokes for the, you know, for the opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, mate. Yeah, exactly that. Have a great day. I will do nice it, yeah. talking to you. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, we'll try and yeah. follow you today uh, round the I'll course. I'll catch, uh, yeah, sorry, catch up with you in a few bits as well. Yeah, and say hello to my little boy Thomas as well. He's going to be putting this on the telly. He sits and watches this all the time. So he'll be sat at this watching, shouting, "Dad, dad, dad!" <laughs> <laughs> cheers, Dennis. All right, mate. Thanks, mate. I'll catch you in a bit. Yeah, cheers. See you later. Right, we're just going to have a quick word with Sam Cartwright and Joe Allison that we spoke to yesterday morning, both in the sportsman class. You alright, Jimmy? Good man. And uh, we saw uh, Joe wheel wheeling a big sledgehammer yesterday. And Sam. Joe! Oh, no. How are we doing, mate? I'm it's a very quick bad. one. Obviously Sam, are you well? Yeah. Let's come round, Mike. <laughs> Joe, what sort of a day did you have yesterday, mate? Um, I had a bit of a tumble. I don't know if you caught me bending the radiator back. Yeah, we saw you with the sledgehammer there. Yeah. Just <laughs> um, we've moved up into Cubman for today. Just to try and get three laps in, really. Right. Can't seem we've been on time late, but give it a go. But overall, enjoyed it? Yeah, it's great. Lovely course. Hard, but yeah. we wouldn't do it if it was easy, well, would we? That's enduro, isn't it? That's it, that's what it should be. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it should be. Exactly. So. And we'll just get in with you, give it to Sam so, now. Just Sam come in, Mike, if we're getting close with the camera. <laughs> Sam, I know you were helping uh, Joe there with Sledgehammer. <laughs> oh, I, I missed good. his fingers <laughs> and his head. <laughs> a good day for you? Uh, no, I missed the one of the checkpoints out, uh, so I cocked up really. Well, try again today. But enjoyed the course? Yeah, enjoyed the course, got round alright, yep. Yeah, got round alright, flying. Um, Pleased with the bike. Yeah. Going well, yeah. I know, uh, Joe's moved up a class today to get that extra lap in. Are you going to be doing the same? No, no, I'll be staying where I am. <laughs> I just want to do my two laps and that'll do. Cool. The bike going well? Yeah, fantastic, yeah. Made it, made it really easy, actually. Cool. Have a great day, mate, alright. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, have a great day, lads. Yeah, cheers. 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 With uh, this young man now, I don't know who he is, but rider 130, riding a beat. Uh, Hello, guys. Hello there. Morning. 
Yeah. You're right, Mark. How are you doing? Right. Didn't recognise you there because you had your head down. Just with Mark, Mark Cockfield now on the beat of 300. 300, yeah. Two stroke 300. Yeah. You missed out yesterday. A fantastic day yesterday. Weather, weather were great, and the course is uh, pretty good. Technical though. I heard so. I heard so. <sighs> They're not my things, time cards. Um, I've never, not have this the second one I've ever done. So I just thought, come and give it a try, really. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes, really. I'm not bothered about a bit of technical stuff. That should be all right. We saw, yeah, we saw you at Eddie's Extreme down at Tongue there. You had a great, a great day. But you see, you start a motor packed up at the end, didn't it? It was my battery. It right. never worked all day till I crossed the finish line. It worked. <laughs> but I did my ribs. I brought my ribs at Tongue. So I didn't ride for about six weeks. But I had a suspension done on it and a lot better now. Yeah. Can't fault it. Absolutely brilliant bike. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it's a win. <laughs> <laughs> You're feeling fit now after your ribs have been repaired? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pulled back. Yeah, I've been riding regular at WR last week, uh, raw week before. So I'm I'm out on it three times a week now. So yeah. And uh, your club and class? Club, I'm in sportsman today because time cards aren't my thing really. So that's why I'm expecting a win really. But normally I make club and bets. I know as well as the, the enduro side, you've been doing a bit of uh, track racing as well, haven't you? Yeah, we, uh, yeah. Well, I've always been a track. That's that's the thing. We've always been on track. Uh, we've just been to Aragon, Spain, uh, on to Fireblades. But that's my background is all track. I've only been race, racing these three years. Never been off-road biker before in my life, but absolutely fantastic. It, we do more of this now than track. Right. It's all we do now. Cool, cool. We'll try and catch up with you later on yeah, uh, at the end of the event and see how we've got on. Yeah. Have, have a great day in the meantime. Thanks, Ian. All right, Paul. Catch all you right. later. Cheers. <laughs> at the special test start now with the uh, with Mark uh, Cockfield. Mark, let's get in here. Yeah, all right, Paul. How's it going so far? I wish I'd have walked the special stage. <laughs> I made a right mess of it first go. I'm hoping to improve this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I might catch him, but I made a bit of a mess of it to be honest. Everything else is all right. Pretty much simple, isn't it? Yeah. So it took a bit of our bits out, but yeah, it's good. I like it. You like the technical going in the the yeah. forest on the on the, uh, the last loop. Yeah, I like all technical stuff. Um, and it's not too technical, do you know what I mean? It's not relentless, is it? You know, you still get your breathing, your fire rods, so ideal. But uh, this, this is a bit technical for me. Fast and technical, it's not... Very tight and twisty in places. Yeah, it's not a good accommodation for me, that. No. Fast and flat's good, but not fast and technical. Yeah, <laughs> Don't be filming in there. <laughs> well, we've got your, go we're gonna have to, your GoPro photos to look at, so I'm looking forward to that. I know, I went back with Eli and Jarvis. <laughs> Jarvis is not what I mean there, I tell you, <laughs> vertical. All right, well, uh, we're looking forward to it, mate. All right, no good problem. luck for the rest of the day. No problem. Cheers.
back in the just back in the pits now with Sam Ludgate. Sam, you're on your last lap now. I'm getting prepared to go out for it. Uh, how, do you, how have you found it so far? It's been really good, yeah. Um, some of the, the special test is not something I'm used to, but it's, it's quite it's quite enjoyable. It's good to be able to just fly it some and try and go as fast as you can. Not like normal air and islands where you I can't go as fast as I can for two two and a half hours, so you got to pace yourself a bit. So so that's good, but. Um, and some of the going through the through the woods and that is is, is mega. It's some really tough. It's tough in places. It's, it's, there's some fantastic scenery as well in points. I don't know if you've yeah, noticed that. Kind of looking around like that and going, whoa. <laughs> and then you've hit a route or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it, you, you can't not have a good day when it's like this, riding your bike around here, can you? So, in terms of you know events, air renowned versus time card. I know you you were more of a air renowned man before, coming from trials background. But has this turned you this event for time card? Uh, I don't know. It's a bit faffy, isn't it, with working out your card and all that. Like, because I got one at checks for some reason. I thought we were going to be really tight, uh, but it wasn't. So I went absolutely full macker for it for half an hour, and then I quite enjoyed that actually. And got there, and I had like eight minutes left or something. It was not not tight. But you find it a real adventure out there? Yeah, yeah. Especially I've not been here before, so it's always it's always good. But um, well, I like extreme stuff, don't I? So, but. Um, yeah, normal air nouns can get a little bit sort of monotonous if there's nothing sort of technical or challenging. I think um, obviously the extreme stuff does have that. So, um, but I'm sure you could have an extreme extreme time card. That would be good, wouldn't it? Most importantly, <laughs> the bike, the beta. How's it going? As usual, never missed a beat. Um, it's running a little bit rich today. I think it's because it's so hot. The air is not so not so crisp. Like it seems a little bit bit rich. I've just actually took it out on air screw back there and it. Noi noisy buggers aren't these motorbikers <laughs> uh, see, yeah it seems to have cleaned it right up yeah and as usual it's never missed a beat like so well, it's great talking to you uh, right. and thanks for uh, letting us have a look at the off-road stuff as well and no we'll worries. catch up with you soon mate yeah thank you very much cheers guys cheers cheers Sam <laughs> Finished. The GoPro jinxed me. <laughs> oh, come off that special stage, got stuck, all downhill from there. Lost my time card. Just is honestly, it, I, I just made it so tough for myself. I don't know why I made it so tough. That was the toughest one I've done ages. Island tongue. I don't. I just made it so hard for myself. So I'm a bit gutted to be honest. But my prediction won't come true anyway. That's for sure. So but, uh, another bike. Just give it a minute there because it's really noisy. We're getting all the echo from the two stroke not noise. But uh, overall, enjoyed the event. Yeah, I enjoyed it tremendously. I, 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 I would have done Langdale, I think it's in two weeks, innit? Yeah. It just clashes with raw five hour. So, but I would have done that. I like the time card. And I think maybe I'd move up a bit. Maybe club and just test myself a bit more if it's not as technical. Yeah. If it's more technical, I'll back to sportsman. <laughs> <laughs> bike, fantastic. Can't fault bike, brilliant. Excellent, it's been great talking to you. Yeah. And uh, we'll look forward to looking at your GoPro footage. I'll, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll take your SD card if no we can. No problem, take it. That. Yeah, that's fine, pal. It's edit it, won't <laughs> you? <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Matt. Right, Thank pal, you. No problem. Now, this weekend coincides with Erzberg. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we went to uh, Cowan Quarry at Rochdale, where we linked in with a young lad from uh, Lancashire, Chris Windle, who was riding the Beta 300 RR. And he's going to be at Erzberg this weekend, so uh, this is how it went.
Chris Windle, I'm from Lancashire. I'm 25 years old and I ride a Beta RR 300. I've been riding Betas for two and a half years now. Um, the engines are bulletproof, they're just a generally good bike. I've set the bike up for me, got all in TTX front and rear. Basic protection, you've got front disc guards, rear disc guards, uh, bash guard, it's going to have an exhaust guard on. You've got to cut a borderline otherwise your bike will weigh a ton. My girlfriend Chloe's really understanding, she, um, she gives me time to ride while she looks after our son Braxton. My son Braxton is two and a half years of age and I've just bought him his first asset. It'd be nice to get him involved in the sport and give him some focus in life. I'm currently riding expert class and my last race was Extreme Ravines where I got second place. My main goal this year, in 2016, is to finish Erzberg. 2015 was my first year at Erzberg, and I qualified for the second row, and I finished halfway through Carl's Diner. Recently I've been riding six days out of seven and the perfect place for me is Can Quarry Rochdale. Can Quarry's got everything that I need, rocks, hills, absolutely everything you could wish for really apart from trees. It's the perfect training ground for Erzberg. My name's Chris Windle and this is what I do. Well that's it from the uh, the Greatwater Estate this weekend near Windermere. It's been a fantastic weekend. The weather has actually been fantastic. I can't say it.
anything more than that really. I want to say a massive thank you to the guys uh, that have helped us this weekend with the filming and uh, the riders wearing the GoPros. Our next event will be Ligares in Portugal in two weeks' time. Look out for the Facebook updates and we'll see you there. Take care for now. <laughs>